Hey, this is Jesse Canton. Man, I am so glad that you took the time to download this podcast. Listen, it's getting ready to be a blessing to you. It is power packed full of wisdom. Listen, as you hear this episode and you maybe you want to be a blessing to this podcast, well, you can hit me up on Cash App. Type in Jesse E. Canty, J-S-S-E, the letter E, C-A-N-T-Y, with the dollar sign, of course. And you can be a blessing. Anything you give will be appreciated. I thank you, and I pray that nothing but God blessings and his best be upon you. Take care. Hey, this is Jesse Kent with another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? Listen to what Jesus said in Mark 6 and 4. Jesus told them that a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and amongst his relatives and his own family. Have you ever wondered why is it like that? Have you ever wondered why strangers might be more supportive of your endeavors and your success than your friends and your family? Well, listen here, that is a reality that we must face. And I want to talk about it on this episode. I want to entitle this one, Crabs in a Bucket. Let's go. Yeah, man. Man of wisdom, man of wisdom. From the pulpit to the podcast, from the pulpit to the podcast. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of How Bad Do You Want It, man? I am your host, Jesse E. Canty, and this is my podcast, man, and I'm excited to have this episode. I've got a lot to say, so let me pray and get into this thing. Father, we thank you right now for the opportunity, God, to come and share what you have placed upon my heart. I pray that you lead me and guide me. Let me be in the right spirit that is with your approval. Let us receive it on uh, uh, on good ground. And build us in courage. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Listen, this is episode 170. Yep. And my title is Crabs in a Bucket, man. This is not something I'm actually excited about sharing either. Because it's kind of somber. It's kind of sad to me. But it's a reality that we got to face. And talking about it will help strengthen us and prepare us for what is. You know, there's something they got to say and say it is what it is and it can't be changed. Well, if you know what it is, then you can prepare yourself for it. And so what it is won't be able to stop you from doing what you got to do anyway. Well, that's what we want to talk about. Let me explain this crab in the bucket. As I did research on it, let me read this and explain this to you. <clears throat> Crabs in a bucket. Some of you have heard that before. You've heard that terminology before or crabs in a barrel. The metaphor is derived from a pattern of behavior noted in crabs when they are trapped in a bucket. While any one crab, listen to this now, any one crab on its own could easily escape its efforts, but yet its efforts will be undermined by other crabs, ensuring that the entire group's collective would be demise. Collective would be demise. As such, the crab mentality shares some features in common with a similar phenomenon of human behavior that's also known in Japanese uh, culture as the tall poppy syndrome. So in other words, the crab mentality that you're getting ready to understand if you never heard it before, most of us have heard it. Uh, in Japanese culture, what we call the tall poppy syndrome. In other words, you got one poppy stick that's going to raise up among the other, then they want to cut down the one that's the tallest. This analogy of crab mentality of the crab in a bucket. Uh, the analogy in human behavior is claimed to be that members of a group will attempt to reduce the self-confidence of any member who achieves success beyond the others out of their out of envy, resentment, spite, conspiracy, or competitive feelings to halt their progress. Oh, man, listen to that. And what that does, man, that is something that even relates back to what I just opened up in the scripture and said uh, through the scripture that Jesus said that a prophet is without honor, except in his own hometown. In fact, let me read that in the message Bible, the message version. The message version says, does Jesus told them a prophet has little honor in his hometown amongst his relatives 
on the streets he played in as a child. And because he had little honor there, Jesus was, wasn't able to do much of anything there. That's Mark 6, 4 and 5. So I've always wondered and said, why in the world that a prophet would not have honor or could not do much usually in the area where he grew up in? And this go it relates back to that crab in a bucket syndrome. And you ask yourself, when we study this thing about the crab in bucket, uh, crabs in a bucket, what can we possibly learn from it? Well, actually a lot. The crabs in a bucket refer to a pattern. Listen now. It refers to a pattern that has been observed from watching the behavior of crabs in a fisherman bucket. The bucket going to represent uh, your peers, the group that you're in. You know, the things that make up in your life consist of. It all starts with one crab trying to escape. When the other crabs notice that there's one crab trying to escape, but they will immediately, they will immediately start to pull it back into the bucket. This resistance occurs repeatedly anytime a crab try to get out, man. The entire group will prevent it from escaping. And because of this, y'all, the fishermen can leave the bucket without a lid on it. The fishermen who caught him and put him in that bucket don't even have to secure the bucket. He can leave the entire bucket without a lid on it. Because he's securing the knowledge that every time one crab try to escape, the others will go out of their way to drag that crab back into the bucket. Think about that, man. And because of this crab in the bucket syndrome in this, you see crabs behave this way. I believe that this was something that the Lord in his infinite wisdom have allowed to be in these creatures that we call crab, but it allowed us to notice it and to study it because I believe that the Lord is showing us how we can be and how some of us are through the life of crabs. So the crabs in a bucket, that is true. Even even when you see crabs and they, they, they fishing for crabs, the crab traps, and I've watched this stuff many times, the crab traps are amazing because the crabs can actually get out of the trap. One crab could get out of the trap. But because of a, the, the mindset of crabs, it collects all of them for therefore they stay in the trap. And we pull the trap up out of the, off the ocean bottom, the bottom of the ocean. And therefore we serve them and we eat them long, John, I mean, not long John Silver, red lobster, etc. But if they work together, they could get the, what was in the trap and get out without losing their lives. So therefore when we come down to us studying crabs, that crab syndrome actually creates a crab mentality. Do you know anybody that has a crab mentality? I promise you, I promise you, you know a lot of people that knows that has a crab mentality. Sad to say you might have a crab mentality, but hopefully after this podcast and we're talking about this, that you got going to begin to deliver you from that. What is a crab mentality? A crab mentality is, is when humans, when humans begin to act like crabs, their view and they treat each other exactly like crabs in a bucket do. It is evident when that collective group of humans works to prevent the success of one individual or any individual who desires to crawl and succeed and have life beyond the bucket they was placed slash born into. There's a difference between humans and crabs, though. Because when crabs do it, we believe that the crabs have no motives of touch. They're doing it by instinct. They're doing it because that's how they was created to be. But when humans do it, humans who display crab mentality, they're often motivated by jealousy, envy, and strife. I mean, their mental mindset, their mental framework has often been characterized by the idea that says thus, if I can't get it, Neither can you. Hmm. Although it can be funny to watch this behavior 
in a bucket of crabs now. It is less humorous. It is less amusing when you are a victim of crab mentality. I mean, it flat out can hurt you and break your heart. It can discourage you. It can cause you to lose your focus, lose your drive when you see that crab mentality in humans. Again, you can look at the crabs getting in a bucket. That's all. I've seen it on YouTube. I've seen it on TikTok where you see crabs that would be putting in a hot pan and all of a sudden man, or put in a bucket. Now, that's a whole different thing now. Put in a bucket and, and every time that crab try to get out, watch this. It will pull one of them will pull it back down. And if that one that keep trying to get out, if he keep trying to get out, then the others will not only pull him down, but they will break his legs. And if he's still trying to move and get out of there and and his legs are broken, then they will collectively. This is fact. They will collectively conspire and kill him. They'll try to steal your hope, steal your drive because you're trying to succeed beyond where they are at. And they get so jealous that they will either break your legs or try to kill you entirely. (laughs) People usually display a crab mentality because they feel threatened. They feel threatened by you in some way. They live in fear of the thought that others are becoming more successful than them. You'll be surprised how many people that's the closest one to you won't lift the finger to support you at all because they fear that you are going to become more successful than them. Than them. That's why sometimes God would drive you away from your hometown. That's why sometimes God will show you that you can get your best support from people who don't even know you. Now, I know this is the norm, but because I'm a little slow sometimes, it bothers me that it's that way. It shouldn't be. You mean to tell me that I can get more support from a stranger than somebody who has my last name or somebody who we played in the streets in the message version? We played in the streets together as kids. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. God has blessed us to have listeners all around the world. And I thought to myself, I said, maybe there's somebody that wants you to have a prayer request. I want you to pray with them concerning anything, your family or whatever it is. If that's be so, listen, drop me an email at Jesse Canty podcast at Yahoo dot com. J-S-S-E-C-A-N-T-Y podcast at Yahoo dot com. I would love to hear from you. I love to pray with you. And I want you to have a blessed day. That's amazing. That's amazing. That crab mentality is not just about preventing people from making progress physically. It involves targeting them mentally, too. See, they not just want to stop you from moving physically. They really want to hit you mentally. I mean, people with this mindset, they will often try to weaken the morale of others. They attack your self-confidence. And they'll try to make you believe that you're not good enough to escape. (laughs) They'll try to make you think that what you're doing is nothing. Have you ever seen anybody? And it hurts even more with this in your family. Have you ever seen anybody that you know you did something that was worthy of accomplishment? How do you know when you're doing something that's worthy? uh, That's a great accomplishment when you can look around in your circle and can't find 10, 15, 20 people who have ever done it. I'm not saying you're better than nobody, but I'm saying when you have have finished school uh, and and had a straight A uh, average all 12 years and you can't find nobody else in your family that done it, they ought to support you. They ought to celebrate with you. But see, I'm going to say it again, that crab mentality is trying to prevent people from moving, not just physically, but mentally. They want to tear down that morale or they want to tear down that thought that you can escape that bucket. But see, here's the thing about it. When they pull that one crab that's trying to get out, when they pull that one crab out of that bucket, back down in that bucket, everybody loses. 
as people try to undermine each other, they contribute to the entire group's collective demise. This is why such behavior is actually counterproductive. Imagine going through all of that effort of for fear of becoming a loser just to end up a loser in every sense of word. <clears throat> Excuse me. So because you're trying to pull one down, it literally will show you that it makes everybody else lose. When the correct way is to do this here is to allow one to help one. I mean, bend over and let them stand on your back to get to the top. So when the one get out of the bucket, he can turn around and help pull others out of the bucket. Or if you just look at him that believe that he could do it, you have the same legs the same clothes that he has. God have given us the same opportunities, though it may be in different forms. You are not less than anybody. But because we are jealous, I'm going to do an episode, a series on jealous envy. Because you're envious, we're jealous of people. We want to tear them down and make them feel that what they're doing is nothing and hold, withhold our support from them. My wife was telling me yesterday, we was talking, she said, Jesse, we was just talking about something. She said, do you realize how you can up and do whatever you're doing, whether it's a restaurant, whatever you're doing, you can up and go to a whole up different region that nobody know you and do it there and get totally different response than the people who know you. I said, I know that for a fact because I've seen that in business. If I go to a region where I wasn't from, that can be way more successful and supportive than the people who know you. How can I fight against that? I can't because Jesus said that's the way it is. But I don't want to, as I hear this, I want to make sure that I don't become, have a, have a crap mindset or become a crab in the bucket mentality. And how do I stop that? How do I make sure that I'm not one of the ones that's trying to pull somebody down? It's some people who are listening to me now. You have felt like giving up many times because you had others pulling you down. I'm going to show you five examples of crab in a bucket mentality. In other words, here are some ways that I want to show you that the crab mentality can hinder your progress. Number one, these five examples, these just examples, it's a whole lot of other ways. Number one, I'm going to give you five examples of a crab mentality, of an example of a crab in the bucket mentality. And then I'm going to show you five ways how you can rise above the crab in the back bucket mentality. Number one, grade, grade in that school. The crab in the bucket mentality is often reflected in peer marked assessments where a student might deflate another student's score out of concern that their fellow classmate might achieve a higher grade. So if they're in school they're, and your friends is grading your, your test, then they'll mark you lower than where you're really supposed to be because they feel that you're going to do it. You're going to score higher than them. That's one way of strong, a crab, uh, a crab mentality. Number two, no support. Another example of crab mentality is when friends fail to support each other. Even when it, listen, listen now, even when it literally costs them nothing. For example, a person might uh, invite a friend to like their new business, business page on Facebook. Yet that friend, that friend now, withhold their like, perhaps due to a tinge bit of jealousy. That feeling on the inside, that feeling on the inside, when you see your friends succeed and when you see your friends trying to do something, and let me tell the truth now, at some point of time, I believe everybody, that's my opinion, everybody at some point of time, when you see someone around you that's excelling and that's doing it, I mean, making it do what it do, that, it, that little feeling on the inside, get that a little funny. I felt it before. But because of God's grace and my knowledge of God's word and now knowing that is not the way God want me to feel. 
you know what I do? I support them. Well, that's going to be my five ways. I got to show you in a minute later on when we get into that. But you got to confront that feeling. If you try to act like you never felt that way, you never, you've never seen your sister or your brother please their mother. Let's go back to Cain and Abel. Don't, don't lie in that like it ain't been there. Fight against it. And I'm going to show you in a minute how you do that. But no support. They don't give you to support. They don't even hit, hit a like on your page. It's amazing, man. You, you, Facebook will reveal people's heart. I'm talking about your friends. I'm, yes, they will. Put something on there that's funny. Put something on there that's, some, some on there that's fleshy. Put something on there that's stupid. Boom, that thing can take off. Say something. You can quote the scripture. You can quote anything. Do something that, that seems that is different. And they act like I didn't see it. No free support. That's another example of a crab mentality. Number three, withholding compliments. Sometimes people will withhold complimenting their peers who do well. They won't even tell you you're doing wonderful because it makes them feel inferior. Or they attribute that person's success to chance or making excuses such as they was lucky rather than recognizing their hard work. What we tend to do, we like to have people die and then everybody won't be put on the program and talk about how inspiring they were. They were but you never told that person when they was alive. Oh, let me get off of that. Number four, withholding connections. <laughs> This is something that's bad among certain individuals. They might refuse to recommend a peer for a role that they know that they will be, ex they will excel at because they are worried that that person will become more successful than them. They might also not pass on a useful contact or opportunity to a peer who requires peer who requires assistance to reach a goal. We don't share contacts. We don't connect people. You know that you can connect them up with somebody that can help them succeed. But you don't want to get that connection up because you're scared that they're going to take off and be bigger than you. Crab mentality. Number five, mocking and planting seeds of doubt is another way that you got crab mentality. Another way is that the crab mentality is manifested is when people will mock their friends and their goals and their aspirations out of jealousy. Their own insecurity. They might try to convince that person that what they are doing is impossible to do. Based on their remark, they usually, they usually the fact that they were they never done it before. Or they never seen nobody else do it. That is another example of crab mentality. Real quickly, I don't want to run out of time. I'm going to give you five ways how to rise above crab mentality or the crabs in a bucket and avoid being one. It can be frustrating to deal with crab mentality in your personal life. But rather than focusing on the negative, here are some things you can do. Number one, have realistic expectations. I mean, be realistic, man. Don't expect everyone to like you or to be in support of your goals. It ain't going to happen, Captain. Realize that the crab mentality exists is the first realizing that that crab mentality exists is the first step is the first step to being you avoid being sucked in by it. When you have realistic expectations, you're less likely to become disappointed by the action of other people. So just know it is what it is and don't expect everybody to support you. Number two, choose your associates and your friends wisely. As much as reasonably possible, stay away from people who blatantly display, display that crap mentality. I know them. I know them as fake friends, fake friends who project their own fear of failures and insecurity on you can be physically and emotionally draining to you. Listen, one of the biggest warning signs. To notice is people who always speaking down on others behind their back. Find you some friends who are supportive and genuine. And remember that sometimes it's better to be alone than to be in the company of crabs. What I do is this. And I've, I've known and I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you the truth. I've supported at least financially at least 10 other of my peers relate, uh, restaurants within my city over the years. I've given, and when I come to their restaurant, not only I buy a lot of food, but I usually tip $50 over. Why? 
because I own a restaurant. So instead of having a crap mentality, I make sure that I force myself. And I don't say that like I don't really want to do it, but I make sure and my wife knows it, that I go find another restaurant who is my peer. And I buy not only I buy something, I don't go complaining about their price. I don't ask no discount, but I buy a whole bunch of unnecessary stuff that I just give to people. And then I give fifty dollars over whatever that bill is over. Because I do not want to have a crap mentality. In fact, I want to help you succeed. Choose your associates wisely. Number three, become a better climber. Man, I should have hit the button right there, the bomb button. One of the best things you can do is ride, to rise above the crabs in the bucket is to work even harder to achieve your goals and to reach your goals. Increase your focus. Improve your skills. Get flat out better. Better. Direct all your energy into your vision rather than on those who are skeptical, skeptical of you. Don't worry about them crabs who trying to pull you down. This is hard to do, but this is what we need to do. Don't worry about them crabs who trying to pull you down. Focus on getting stronger. Even with their pull that's trying to pull you down, you'll find a way to climb and override it anyhow. Become a better climber. Number four, how do you guarantee not to be the I mean that you can rise above being a crab in a bucket and not be one? Number four, succeed in silence. If those crabs don't even notice you, they can't drag you down. Remaining humble and working in silence, y'all, that's often a real protection. Of, 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 of avoiding the crabs trying to pull you down. One of the most common ways that people attract crabs is by broadcasting their achievements. Always telling everyone their next move. It's always better to just do the thing and mind your business. The crabs can't drag you down when you already managed to make it out of the bucket. Don't just tell them what you're getting ready to do. Just do it move in silence. By the time you get where you want to go, you've already done patent that name. You already done got your bill with the building. You already done got started. Then you tell them when they can't stop it. And the last, number five, how do you avoid being a crab or get beyond the crabs in the bucket trying to pull you down? Lead, this is what I alluded to just now. Lead by example. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lead by example and support your peers. One of the most powerful things you can do for your community, which is your bucket, is to be supportive of your peers. Rise above a competitive mindset and genuinely seek to help others who are doing something that may be on a level where you're not doing it. View one person's win as a win for the entire group of people. Share the opportunity, recommendations, give them recommendations. Do what you can do to help them and do not do anything to hurt them. Tell people about them. Don't be one of those people who want to see you do good, but never better than them. <laughs> I know some people like that. They was my friends until I started getting, they had, they always had I mean, they had the new cars. They had. They always had more than me. And we was tight until I messed around and started to have something. When I started to have something, all of a sudden, they wouldn't answer any calls. <laughs> I mean, I can go on and on and on, man. <clears throat> and it actually hurt because I'm like, oh, you want me to do good, but you don't want me to do better than you. Well, don't worry about people who aren't happy for you. Because truth of the matter, they probably aren't even happy for themselves. But just crab mentality is real. And I pray that we as a people will overcome this crab mentality. I know things ain't going to change. It is what it is. That's just realistic part. But what can change is the way we allow that crab mentality to wipe out our dreams to rob us of our hopes and our expectations to cause us to want to just come down. I mean, you can be, you can be Ricky who plays football, trying to get out of the, 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 uh, uh, the, the ghetto, out of the hood, out of amongst where you came from. And you always going to have people there who's trying to pass on rumors, who's trying to tear you down behind your back. 
don't want to support you and they're going to do everything they can to hurt you. But I pray despite what the enemy have been throwing at you, you are still going to succeed. I decree in the name of Jesus that that crab mentality, not only not being you, but it will not even hold back your entire seed and generation and family. I speak that what you put your hand to do is shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that this blessed you. Know that I love you. Catch you the next one. Hey, business owners, this is Rashad Brown with Swipe Fast, located in Columbia, South Carolina. We are excited to be partnering with Jesse E. Canty in the How Bad Do You Want It podcast. Since 2017, Swipe Fast has been helping business owners like you save up to 99% in their debit and credit card processing fees. So if you process business to business or business to consumer payments, we have solutions that will meet your needs and would love to hear from you. You can reach us at swipefast.com forward slash save. That's swipe, spelled with the Y, or contact us at 1-800-597-0713. Don't forget to let us know that Jesse E. Canty sent you. Have a blessed day.